Welcome to this series of podcasts on the beauty and power of liturgical art. Created through the Chichester Workshop for Liturgical Art and our associates, we explore how God reveals himself to us through the material world and how we, as a union of matter and spirit, can worship God through works of material beauty. Well, great to see you again, Jim. Uh, welcome to this uh, podcast. I have with me uh, Dr. Jim Blackstone, whom we all learn studied under me as an apprentice, but before that he was a, a practitioner as a painter, but there are other things he'll tell us about. So uh, in our discussion today, we're going to talk particularly about commissioning liturgical art. Uh, I've spoken with some priests uh, about commissioning from their point of view, but I want to talk to Jim as someone who paints icons, makes mosaics and wall paintings. From his point of view, what is the ideal way for someone to commission him to do some sacred art for churches? So welcome, Jim. Thank you. Great to be here. We have behind me a, a cross uh, commissioned by the, um, uh, the cathedral in Aberdeen, which you've been involved in a bit. So you, though the commission came primarily through your colleague Martin, um, you've had other commissions from churches, cathedrals and individuals. So could you tell us what are the main features of a well-crafted brief from your commissioner? Then we'll talk about the difficulties that come from not having such a well-crafted brief. Perhaps you could give some examples as well of, of well-crafted briefs that you've received. I think a well-crafted brief usually comes after a period of discussion mm -hmm. and building up a rapport with the at origin potential commissioner who then moves on towards committing to the commission. So you establish a relationship exactly. first. Yeah, so I think a good brief comes from that because you're relating to that person as you paint or make the mosaic or whatever medium you're working with throughout that whole process. And if you've got that rapport through discussions towards the icon design itself, you're then placed really healthily in the whole making process. So I'm taking brief in its broad mm -hmm. context there as a way of instructing the artist that incorporates a willingness to engage in building up a personal rapport. So how might they contact you in the first case? How does that relationship begin? Often personally, through knowing the church, knowing people in the cathedral, uh, often through word of mouth, and I think, thirdly, through the website, mm -hmm. and people can come in through there. So in a way, the relationship can begin even before they've met you, like they've seen your website and they thought, wow, I like the ethos of this man's work. Or if you are approached by recommendation, someone already has got that relationship with you, perhaps. So. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, the website does seem to communicate well. I'm sub I, it seems that the, to me the, over, the images can seem oversaturated or they don't really work, but people pick up a surprising amount about the kind of work that you might do or the kind of person that you are, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, would you agree with that through the website? You, Certainly, yeah. You built up contacts through many years in many ways internationally. So, I mean, And also through what I've written, sometimes they will hear a discussion like this. But yeah, I, I like that man's approach. So mm -hmm. yeah, not just the visual, but the audio and the written. And that can happen over time. So someone could hear you a few years ago and then it comes to a later point at which they think, well, okay, I'm in a position now to commission someone. Mm, that's true, yeah. So relationship. So they approach you and do they tell you quite specifically what they want or they just say, I want this wall painted or I want an icon, can we discuss it? Do they normally come to you with a very specific theme in mind? Yes, I think so. I, I think a th specific theme, but not the specifics about how to do it. The specifics about how to do it may emerge as having been there at the beginning through the course of discussion. In other words, they, they kind of did have some sense of the design at the beginning. They just weren't verbalizing it in the context of those initial discussions. Perhaps we can talk uh, about a particular commission you're working on at the moment. So we route our our discussion of the principles of commissioning on a particular work. So could you tell us a bit about first what the subject is, but then go back to uh, telling us how you chose this particular theme, the process of the discussion? Right, so the subject then is the resurrection of Christ. Right. So um, the general approach from the commissioner was the resurrection. You hadn't decided yet what, how that would be depicted. 
That's right. right. So the commission for the resurrection falls within a series, and the discussion was around how to present Christ resurrected, and we talked about the significance of the person of Mary Magdalene um, in relation, in particular, interestingly, to the position of the and significance of the person of the Virgin Mary uh, within the whole of Christian life. And the importance then to come to the theme of this painting of Mary Magdalene as experiencing Christ in the garden, risen um, in grief, and experiencing him not by immediate physical resemblance to the person she knew who died, but by hearing his voice calling her name. So did this, as it were, the, the deeper theology, did that come from you or from the commissioner? From the commissioner. Interesting. So I was responding to this sense of the relation of these vital female figures mm -hmm. in um, our Christian faith. So if one wants to commission something, um, it's not necessary, but it's certainly helpful if they do their own research, not necessarily just reading books, but research into their own selves about why this particular theme is so important to them. I think so, and I think as the artist who's to make it for them, whether in individual church, etc., it's a case of trying to offer the space where that person can trustingly investigate their own most desired icon mm. um, that fits within the tradition. Mm. And so that may be a case of questions coming back or reflecting their points or exploring areas to one side or to the other to see whether what they're thinking may successfully enter into that area towards the fulfillment of the icon. So it's very much a listening process, but, but then offering something back to form that final design. So he approached you and wanted the subject of the resurrection and he indicated the importance of Mary Magdalene and the women involved. Then you gave your feedback. What was the next stage? Did you do some drawings then? At what point did you actually put pencil to paper? Because this came after a completed icon of the crucifixion of the same scale, mm -hmm. And we were, the Commission and I were thinking then about potential icons to follow. I not only sketched what might work in terms of our discussion for this icon of Christ and Mary Magdalene, but also offered sketches for proposed icons down the line, okay. so that this one would fit not only with the crucifixion that had just been done, but also would fit potentially with those to follow after. So it was already a kind of landscaping of this icon within a series. That's interesting because I've noticed that when people come to me, for example, they want an icon in a cathedral or a church, often they're just thinking of that object in isolation. But one of my jobs is to integrate it into the whole. In this case, it wasn't so much integrating it into a church, but into a series of icons. Um, so would you say one of the elements of the process of commissioning and being commissioned is, as a professional um, liturgical artists, one of your tasks is to ensure that it's integrated into the larger picture, because that, that requires a certain expertise or knowledge and experience, doesn't it? It does, and I think uh, the, the commissioner may have a sense that the initial place of that icon may be provisional upon mm -hmm. a final place of that icon, which may be many years hence or, or near, and that's to be taken into account. But I would say that the way I learned this is from studio and hearing conversations that you've had with commissioners um, over the phone or in person, and a sense there of the way in which the work icon works in its context. Of course, working on wall paintings is a very direct way in which the icon has its place in context as well. And then the designs that lead up to that kind of configuration are much more clearly set into context. So all of these things help. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to discussion on, a, on an icon such as this. Mm, that's wonderful. So did you just do one drawing and that was sufficient or did you have to revamp the drawing according to the feedback from the commissioner? Uh, one drawing was sufficient, but I think on the basis that we'd already had a certain oh, okay. amount of discussion, we'd already done one icon. 
Um, and so I did one sketch, and then I did a, a, a detailed, um, full-size drawing in order to transfer it to here. And I made quite a few changes, which were really to do with the effectiveness um, of the aesthetic rather than the development in any way of the theme. Okay. So would you say that was a fairly successful commission in the sense that the commissioner gave you enough information but not wasn't too directive? Would you say that was a from the point of view of people who might be listening now who are thinking of commissioning something, would this person's process have been a, the best way it could have been done? And if not, could it have been improved in any way? I mean, I feel very grateful to this commissioner, not only for the commission, but also for the way in which the commission has gone about mm -hmm. trusting the process okay. and giving a lot of space. Um, there's a certain gift of the space of time. Mm -hmm. And one thing I have appreciated in commissions, and I think it's been said by this commissioner specifically, is that um, we know it takes time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a, a labor that is time intensive. And from their point of view, as I understand it, we, they say, will get a better work of art out of it if we give you the time. So you can have that. Um, and that's after negotiating prices and so on. So there's, there's real clarity and transparency about that. My response to that is really to value that sense which they've given to my own labor and to do my very best for them in that. So there's a lovely sense of, of building up, I think, of um, well, what's ultimately a sense of love, which is mm. where the icon comes from, where the icon ultimately finds its place and then is transcended, I think. Mm. So, in a few words, how could we summarise then uh, the features, characteristics of a good commission? Trust, relationship, a clarity of central theme, clarity of central willingness theme. to dialogue around how that manifests visually, um, willingness to go with the limitations of the material, mm -hmm. certain things you can do and can't do with certain materials, um, and yeah, the virtue of patience <laughs> is always something that's. I would value. Um, yeah. Good. So let's consider commissions that have been difficult for you. I know when you're in my studio as, as an apprentice and, and coming on to be a, a master in your own right, there was one particular commission I remember, it was quite difficult. Could you tell us what made that commission difficult, um, the characteristics of it, and, and, and why it actually didn't necessarily improve the quality of the final work? I think, uh, in recalling, the, the one that we're talking of here, I, I think probably underlying that was a sense of a shifting brief. Mm -hmm. And my task originally was to fulfill what I thought was a pretty clear brief and, and wonderfully resourced in terms of imagery. Then to find, perhaps in response to initial sketches, perhaps in response to really enjoyable further conversations, that that brief shifted into something else. And so my task then was to adapt to that shifting brief. And then if that occurs recurrently, there's a sort of questioning that arises on both sides as to where we're really heading here. And then there's that has to be a decision about, is there a breaking point? You know, are we really getting to a place which is gonna work for all parties here? Mm -hmm. um, or is it best to say, no, we don't think there's enough um, in accord here to make something that's really going to work. Um, so I think um, my sense for the commissioner would be give a brief, um, discuss it at length, make changes to sketch, stick with it. Okay. So in this case, though it began with clarity, they kept changing their mind effectively. I know sometimes from my own experience, people have an idea and you produce a sketch. And they bounce ideas off that, and you understand that there can be some tweaking, some adjustments, because a lot of people don't think visually, they need something, and then when they see that first sketch, they think, actually, how about this or that? Um, and that's part of the process. But on the other hand, that can go too far, they keep shifting. Mm -hmm. So that's not a help, helpful thing. Okay. One thing I've heard you said, and I've, I've learned from amongst the many things, and is um, the value of doing a sketch quite close to the painting. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be quite helpful, not only in the sense that when you get to the painting, the sketch and drawing is fresh in mind, but also you're moving quite quickly on. 
Right. So you're not doing a sketch <laughs> yeah, with the commissioner, the agree, and then say <laughs> to the commissioner a year later, I'm coming back to this now, I'm going to begin to paint. Oh, well, maybe. I, mean, I haven't had that experience, but I'm just thinking that could happen. So that sense of moving quite quickly on from the drawing to the painting and then to completing. That's true. I mean, I've found the behind doing the sketch is a lot of research, saturating myself and other icons of that tradition. And all that is my short-term memory. So if I wait for another two years, then I've lost that. I've got to re redo it. Um, on the other hand, I've got to give enough time for them to give a genuine, thoughtful reaction. But I do tend to give them a, a deadline. Um, sometimes there's got to be quite a long space, like I've just finished a drawing for a commission for a church in London I've done quite a bit of work for, but they've got to go through faculty. So mm -hmm. that might be six months a year. So then I've got to <laughs> revive all that information. But if there isn't a faculty, basically I send a drawing and say I'll be starting in a week or two days, depending what it is. They do give me some feedback. Um, so they know they've got a short amount of time to right. respond. Right, so clear timelines. Yeah, be really transparent. Don't be unrealistic, but on the other hand, don't give them too much time. Um, yes, interesting. So what a commission ought to avoid is shifting the parameters too much. Anything else you can think of from a point of view of commission are things to avoid. Can I mention one here? Telling the iconographer or the liturgical artist how to do something. You've got to say what you want, the, the final effect you want, but don't be too specific about how you want it to be done. Have you, have you found that, that it's been unhelpful if they say, I want it this colour and that colour and I want them to be here and I want... Yeah, I think I, yeah, I, want, yeah, I have had that. Uh -huh. and, um, so why is that unhelpful? Or more to the point, why do you think it lowers or can lower the quality of the final work? Well, I, I put it at a basis, professional trust, isn't mm -hmm. it? Okay. You know, why are you going to someone else rather than, not doing, it, rather than doing it yourself? <laughs> you know? So if you know so much about the details of something that you feel you can instruct at the minutiae of how to do something, mm -hmm. you know, you could do it yourself. So there's that sense of, well, you're trusting someone to do it. And I think then as the artist, the question is, well, why don't I have the trust to do this in the terms of material? So that, there's a kind of, what I was thinking of earlier in terms of the rapport, that just perhaps begins to mm. get tested a little bit at some point as well. Yeah. Yes, I found it doesn't often happen, but roughly 10, 20% of the time, someone says what they want. Then they get a bit specific about how they want it done. And my response generally to that is, now, I see what you're trying to achieve in this icon or mosaic or wall painting. But I think we can do it a different, a better way. Mm. So I've got to distill the effect that they want from how they think it's best done. So it's not as though I'm opposing them, but I'm affirming the essential. And they're just suggesting in a gentle way, well, I think we can do it better this way. And yeah. I think, except in one case, every case, you say, yeah, that's, that's better that way. Yeah. So um, I've got to sort of quell my irritation of <laughs> being told exactly how to do it. Well, I suppose um, that's a sort of reflection of the way that materials are, isn't it? There's only so much you can do with this or that material. Yeah. Or the and size, you know, some people want to so much in, but I've got to remind myself, it's only this big. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. interesting. I just received a commission recently for, uh, I call it an icon because it will be done in icon style, but it won't be an icon in the sense that it will be used for veneration and church. But um, it's a bit complicated um, work commissioned by uh, an Orthodox Christian who's a professor of marine biology. And he wanted an image that integrated, um, let's call it gradual creation, evolution, um, with uh, the patristic tradition. So it was quite sort of open, but he at times got a bit specific about what he wanted. But I, I wanted his input as a professor of marine biology, so obviously I needed um, the correct time scale for how different creatures developed. Um, but when I came to the design, I had to forget deliberately some of the things he'd put in. And he threw a few ideas up, but he wasn't telling me to do it this way. Um, but I appreciated his throwing up specific ideas, but some of them I had to say, actually, this wouldn't work visually. Hmm. So um, I have found that though I want as much input and brainstorming, have you found this? You've got to have a certain openness in the beginning to brainstorm. Don't commit yourself too early to a specific road. Learning it. Yeah, uh -huh. but what was interesting about the, the level of complexity that works within an icon as well, because okay. if the icon is to do with the presence of a particular person mm -hmm. or persons, then to have extraneous 
or to be judged extraneous paraphernalia around it, which well, it can seem like that, <laughs> you know, which can be wonderfully constructive for the meaning of an icon, if in limited number. But if lots of objects around cluttering it up, you reduce the sense of the, the power of presence of the person. Mm -hmm. right? Something I've learned, yes. I think, from... An your, icon is a relationship rather than a, a book to tell you lots of facts. Yeah. And, and that actually, that coming back as well to informing something about what helps perhaps the commissioner appreciate what the artist might do for them, is um, be, be, you know, be willing to explore the, the option for radical simplicity mm -hmm. because of the presence. Uh, radical simplicity in, in many senses, but because of the presence of the person in relation to them or to whoever will be in, in front of that icon. Interesting, wonderful. So we've summarised um, virtues of a good brief, uh, the characteristics of a, of a good commission. Can we summarise the things to avoid if you're commissioning something? Um, don't overclutter. Mm -hmm. uh, clear brief, stick to it um, without shifting it. Um, those are two I can, yeah, I can think that's of. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ian. It's a great pleasure to speak. Oh, it's been, it's, in these discussions, it's great to sort of be learning, is asking questions and learning myself. I, I've been a professional for over 40 years doing this, but the more I know, the more I know I don't know. So I'm, I'm learning from everyone and it's been a joy. Thank, Thank you. you.